all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Let's have a look at problem 73B, another multi-product CVP problem. I'll try to move a little bit more quickly this time. Tony's is a pizzeria located near a local university. The restaurant not only sells two types of pizza, thin crust and deep dish, but also sells pasta. Information relating to the three products for the next month follows. And uh, there's the info, and it says the company has fixed expenses of 10 grand and a tax rate of 20%. So first thing just quickly let's just check the margins on all these products or so cm per unit these are per unit right sales price per unit and variable cost per unit our cm per unit is nine bucks for thin crust 12 bucks for deep dish and is seven dollars per unit for pasta okay uh it says compute the company's expected profit for the upcoming fiscal year so or for upcoming fiscal period which is going to be a month right where we got monthly fixed costs expected sales and units for the month uh so a thousand units times 15 bucks uh is fifteen thousand dollars we got thin crust we've got deep dish and we've got pasta and we'll do a total so again our sales revenue for thin crust is a thousand times fifteen dollars that's fifteen thousand dollars our sales revenue for deep dish four hundred times twenty dollars that's eight thousand dollars and two hundred times twelve dollars that's just twenty four hundred dollars for the uh, pizza or a pasta rather <laughs> uh, so that's twenty five thousand four hundred in total on to our variable expenses. Our variable expenses are $6 a unit for the thin crust. There's a thousand units, so that's $6,000 in variable expenses. For the deep dish, it's eight bucks times 4,000, that's $3,200. And for the pasta, five bucks times 200 is a thousand. So that is 10,200 in variable expenses. Our CM then, 15 minus six is nine. 8 minus 3,200 is 4,800, 2,400 minus 1,000 is 1,400, and 25, 4 minus 10, 2 is 15,200. Our company's fixed expenses, and they don't break them down by product line, it's just 10 grand in fixed expenses, you know, kitchen costs, you're not going to typically break down to which kitchen costs apply to thin crust versus deep dish. Uh, their fixed costs are just 10 grand meaning they have operating income of $5,200. Their income taxes are 20%. 20% of $5,200 is 1040 bucks, leaving them net income 5,200 minus 1,040 is uh, $4,160. So there we've got it. We've figured out our net income. We've prepared a full income statement. And again, we, we didn't have to necessarily. It's going to come in handy later, but all we really needed to do was compute the CM and kind of go down from there. And we could have done that with our CM per unit computations that we did at the top. Uh, but there's our expected profit, our expected net income after tax for the fiscal upcoming fiscal year. Uh, compute the company's sales mix. It says note solved the normal way. I'm not sure, even sure what that note is all about, but let's compute the company's sales mix. Um, okay, so our company's sales mix are uh, a thousand units of thin crust, 400 units of deep dish, 200 units of pasta, so 1,600 units. And so for a thin crust, we're just going to go 1,000 of those 1,600 are thin crust. And 1,000 out of 1,600 
62.5% of our sales are thin crust. Uh, 400 out of 1,600 is 25%, and that is our deep dish. Uh, our pasta sells 200 out of 1,600, and that's 12.5% go to pasta. So again, our sales mix looks like this. Thin crust, 62.5%. Deep dish, 25%. And pasta, 12.5%, and that adds up to 100%. Now, remember why we're doing this. We want to figure out our weighted average contribution margin per unit. We know our contribution margin for each of these units, 9, 12, and 7, but we need to know what the average customer is putting into our till in terms of contribution margin, and that means we weight them according to which units we sell the most of. So we take the CM per unit, and we go 9, 12, and 7. And so, of course, when we're averaging this, we could add the 3 together and divide by 3, but the one that should have the most weight is the 9, the second most weight is the 12, and the one with the least weight is the 7. So I would expect our answer to lie somewhere probably between 9 and 12 here. Uh, you know, because it's, it's going to be the 12 will carry a lot more weight than the 7 because 25% of our units were sold at $12 a unit. Let's just see weighted average CM per unit. So 62.5% times 9, point, not point oh, 0.065, point 0.625 times 9 is 5.625. 25% of 12, I should do that in my head, it's 3. And 12.5% of 7.125 times 7 is 0 0.875. So when I add that up, my weighted average contribution margin per unit, 5.625 plus 3 plus 0.875, I get 9.5. So the average customer is putting $9.50 into our till 950 uh, not into our till i shouldn't say that they're covering their costs so they're putting more money than that on our till but the after variable expenses uh they're making us nine dollars and fifty cents and that's our cm per unit okay so 950 is our cm per unit uh now let's figure out our break-even point that's going to be the number we use for cm in our break-even point calculation. Fixed expenses divided by CM per unit is break-even point. Our fixed expenses, we, I'll have to look up. Our CM per unit, though, is 950 a unit. Uh, fixed expenses are 10 grand a month. Ten thousand divided by 950 is 1053 i need to sell a thousand and fifty three entrees right whether it be uh thin crust deep dish uh, pizzas or pasta dishes i need to sell a thousand and fifty three of them in a month to break even so if there's 30 days in a month you can say well it's about 35 uh dishes per day and am i able to do that you know it's a great sort of sniff test to the viability of the company but let's break it down what would we expect uh these units to be made up of well 62.5 percent are going to be thin crust 25 percent deep dish and 12 and a half percent will be uh pasta dishes so 1053 times 0 0.625 is 659 uh thin crust pizzas need to be sold uh, 1053 times 0 0.25, 264 uh, deep dish pizzas need to be sold, and 1053 times 0 0.125, 132 pasta bowls need to be sold. So again, that was thin crust, 
deep dish and pasta. That's what we need to sell in order to break even. We could also put that in dollars and maybe we should because I know we're going to use it later in the question. So why don't we put that in dollar terms? We know our price is 15, 20, and 12. So let's multiply the thin crust amount by 15, the deep dish by 20, and the pasta amount by 12, and just figure out those dollar amounts just while this is all kind of fresh. 659 times 15 is 9885. 264 times 20 is 5280. So I need to sell $9,800, almost $10,000 worth of thin crust pizza, about $5,000 worth of deep dish pizza, and 132 times 12, about $1,500 in pasta each month. 15, I forgot the number, 84, about $1,600 in pasta. So the total, 98, 9885 plus 5280 plus 1584, I need to sell $16,749. If I want to break even at those sales mixes and it'll be slightly over break even point because I was rounding up throughout. Uh, uh, but that's basically what I need to do if I want to break even. OK, and so it's good to have these as targets in mind, but most companies want to do better than break even. So our answer to B was right there. There's our sales mix and our answer to C was right here. How many units do we need to sell to break even? Well, we needed that sales mix and we needed uh, a lot more information than that to figure out how many units of thin crust, deep dish and pasta I needed to break even. So moving on to D, assuming a consistent sales mix, uh, if the company wishes to earn monthly net income of 25 grand, how many units must they sell? Well, obviously more than what they're selling currently, a lot more because they're only making 4160. So if they want to make 25 grand and taxes are 20%, how much do they want to make before tax? Well, let's figure that out. All you do is you say, okay, if, if net income is going to be 25 grand, we know taxes are going to be 20% of pre-tax net income. So again, if pre-tax net income is 100%, uh, taxes are going to be 20% of that. And net income is going to be 80%. We just divide net income by 80% to figure out what our pre-tax net income would be. 25 divided by 0.8 and you're going to find that it's 31.25. So 31.250 is our pre-tax net income. That's the number we're going to shoot for in our target profit calculation knowing that we're going to take 20% off at the end. So again 31.250 times 0.2 is 6250. I take 6250 away. I end up at my 25 grand target. So there's my target, but I'm actually going to go back a step and say, okay, well, my pre-tax net income target is 31250. So remember the formula. The formula is fixed expenses, 10 grand, plus target, 31250. divided by our contribution margin per unit, which we just computed as $9.50. So 10 plus 31.250 divided by $9.50, uh, 43.43, we're rounding up. So we need to sell 4,343 uh, entrees which 4,343 entrees? Well, it breaks down just the same. 62.5% of them are going to be thin crust. 25% uh, of them are going to be deep dish. And 12.5% of them are going to have to be pasta dishes. So let's crunch that number. 4,343 times 0.625. 2715, again rounding up, thin crust pizzas. 4343 times 25%. 1086 deep dish pizzas. And 4343 times 0.125, uh, 543 
pasta dishes. So that's the breakdown of which dishes I need to sell in order to make a target profit of 25,000, 31,250 before tax profit, but 25,000 after tax profit. Again, a pretty challenging task if you think, well, right now I'm selling 1,400 and 200. I need to more than double my output. Now, is that realistic? Probably not. If, if I'm expecting to sell 1,000, is it realistic to sell 2,700 thin crusts? I doubt it, like 2.7 times what I'm expecting to currently do. I'm going to need to change something fundamental about my company if I wish to meet that target profit. Okay, so that was part E, I think, uh, maybe D. On to part E. Part E says compute the margin of safety in both dollar and percentage terms. Well, remember, margin of safety equals budget sales minus break even sales in dollars. So our budget sales in dollars just come from our first budget, $25,400. Our break even sales we computed here and we actually did it in dollars right at the end because I said, oh, we're gonna probably need that. 16,749. So 25,4 minus 16,749 is 8,651. That is our margin of safety. Our sales can be 86.51 below what we budgeted and we'll still be making profit or breaking even. We won't be losing money. That number as a percentage is 86.51 and you divide by your budget sales, 25.4, and you get 34 point, let's round to one, 34.1%. So again, 86.51 divided by 25.4 is 34%. So our sales can drop by 34% and we'll still be breaking even. Okay, folks, that's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one.